Welcome, pilots! The Uprising expansion for EVE Online was released on November 8th. While the focus of the expansion is on factional warfare, a bundle of new Navy ships have also been added to the game. Among the new ships is a group of Navy exploration frigates, one for each of the main Empire factions. The Magnet Navy issue, Heron Navy issue, Imicus Navy issue, and Probe Fleet issue. I'm not involved in factional warfare content, but I believe these new ships are being introduced to tackle these new Operation Center hacking sites. As a solo PvE player, I view them as filling a similar role as the Astero, though none are nearly as strong. All four Navy Exploration Frigates share a number of common ship attributes. They retain their probe strength and analyzer virus strength bonuses from their standard Exploration Frigate counterparts. The Salvager Duration bonus is removed, but they gain a bonus to reduce the CPU requirement for both core and expanded probe launchers. They also all have significantly more hit points. Each ship also includes some kind of combat-related bonus, unique for each Empire faction. The Magnet Navy issue has a bonus to small energy turret damage, with two turret hardpoints. It gains a fifth low power slot, giving it plenty of options for a stronger armor tank. It does, however, drop the drone bay, losing access to three drones. The Heron Navy issue has a bonus to light missile and rocket damage, with two launcher hardpoints and an extra utility high power slot. It drops the drone bay as well, also losing access to three drones. The Imicus Navy issue has a bonus to small hybrid turret damage, with two turret hardpoints. It gains a fourth low power slot, leaving a little more room to improve its armor tank. It also gains a bonus to drone hit points and tracking, enlarging its drone bay while keeping the bandwidth for four drones. The probe fleet issue has a bonus to light missile and rocket rate of fire, with two launcher hardpoints and an extra utility high power slot. Like the Magnet and Heron, it also drops the drone bay along with its access to three drones. My personal interest in these ships is to use them for running standard data and relic sites, as well as some of the easier combat sites, using a single unified fit. I won't be expecting to run anything more difficult than a DED 3 of 10 combat site. So the theoretical fits I'll be presenting here should hopefully be good for any hideaway or refuge combat anomaly, DED sites up to the 3 of 10, or the hideout or lookout sites. All four fits share a common theme. They're designed to keep the cost low, restricting modules to tech 2 and rigs to tech 1. While you could save a mid-power slot by using an integrated analyzer, those tend to be quite costly, so use them at your own discretion. I'll include the fits in the description box below, but here's a brief summary for each. The Magnet Navy issue uses beam lasers with two heatsinks and an armor tank with some extra buffer. The Heron Navy issue uses light missile launchers with two ballistic control systems and a shield tank with some extra buffer. The Imicus Navy issue uses railguns with two drone damage amplifiers and a cap-stable armor tank. And the Probe Fleet issue uses light missile launchers with two ballistic control systems and a cap-stable armor tank. As of the time I'm recording the footage for this video, the cost on the open market has been steadily coming down to prices similar to the Navy Combat Frigates. Among the changes in the Uprising expansion are reduced loyalty point costs for obtaining Navy ships, which should further support that eventual outcome. When I run data or relic sites, it's normally in a regular exploration frigate fit with a micro-warp drive. In most high-security hacking sites, the containers are spaced close enough apart that an afterburner is still quite efficient. I don't think I'd be looking to run low-security hacking sites in these ships, as a regular cheap exploration frigate does just as well. I took out a Heron Navy issue to run a handful of Garista's combat sites. It performs about as I was expecting in the easier sites, such as combat anomalies in the Garista's hideout. It's certainly capable in the Garista's 3 of 10 site, but with the extra time it takes to complete the site, you'll likely be susceptible to competing pilots snagging your loot. I'm currently in the midst of producing a 13-part series detailing all high-security Sanchez Nation combat sites. I previously produced similar series for the Serpentis, Garistas, Angel Cartel, and Blood Raiders. 
and just recently completed a series on fitting tactical destroyers for running combat sites. You can find all of my EVE Online content in the gaming section of my website over at RileyEntertainment.com. So stay tuned to Riley Entertainment, and smash that like button if you enjoy my content.